Well, good morning, everybody, and welcome to Monday, uh, Monday, October the twenty fourth, twenty twenty two. Listen, we are two months until two months from today is Christmas Eve, and man, uh, it's hard to believe it's October. Uh, or not October, but October 24th, and hard to believe we're coming down to the end of it and entering into November, getting into December, and man, it is just, man, it's been a great month of October. Uh, It's been an awesome time uh, here in this fall season. Uh, Anyway, I hope you had a great weekend. I hope our Power Up uh, does find you well and doing well. Uh, and look forward to what God has for us today. Let me just take a moment and... Uh, just kind of thank everybody for just the wonderful weekend in church. Had a great, great time yesterday. Guest speaker, uh, Brother Chase Williams, and he did a phenomenal job just challenging us to uh, to really, uh, at the heart of his message was to be all in for Jesus Christ and to not be ashamed to share the gospel. And then he gave us some tools to, uh, by which to share the gospel and just a great reminder yesterday, and thank you so much for your welcoming of our guest speakers in, and just a, a phenomenal job there. And then I uh, want to say a special thank you to uh, my church family, uh, and it is uh, thank you so much for the wonderful uh, cards, uh, just the encouraging words, uh, and just the gifts uh, yesterday, and uh, it is just, uh, I enjoy uh, serving here at Calvary Baptist Church, enjoy being uh, your pastor, and it's a privilege. Uh, and uh, and I love you all so very much. And thank you for loving me, my family, uh, and uh, Calvary Baptist Church has just been such a blessing uh, to me and encouragement to me. So thank you uh, for all you've done. Came uh, came to the office today, and uh, let me just share with you really quick. Uh, look what uh, underneath my desk. Uh, had some beautiful Mountain Dew, and so thank you also for uh, for that. So it's been uh, it's just been been great, and thank you so much for being just a wonderful church family. Now uh, we're going to get into Job chapter two, uh, Job chapter number two here today, and let me just kind of. It's been a couple of days, so it's kind of reset just a little bit of what's going on. You remember. Uh, uh, God has allowed allowed Satan to afflict Job, uh, and has taken uh, Job's possessions have been taken, uh, his family, uh, his children have lost their lives, and just a sad, sad time for Job. You look back at verse number one. I'm sorry, chapter number one. We find that he. Uh, he uh, he arises, rent his mantle, shaved his head, fell down on the ground, and worshipped. And the Bible describes Job as, in all this, Job sinned not, nor charged God foolishly. And so we see Job's response in the midst of, of great heartache, great trial. And then, <clears throat> excuse me, in chapter number two, uh, Satan goes back before the Lord. And continues to make accusation accusation against Job and says, "Hey, you know what, Job? Yeah, you took everything from him, but you know what? If you, excuse me, if you take the his health away from him, then he will curse you. Then he will turn his back on you." I I say to man, skin for skin, he says in verse number four, uh, "Let me afflict his body." Uh, and uh, uh, we find this in verse number seven. So went, so went Satan forth in the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And Job would scrape and scratch those boils uh, with a pot's herd, uh, and man, just be in a lot of pain. Uh, and, and once again, as we consider Job here, remember God's description of him. We find it in chapter one and chapter number two. Uh, he is perfect, an upright man, one that feareth God, one that escheweth evil. And we find in, in chapter number one, that's God's description of Job. We find in chapter number two, after the first part of his testing and trial, uh, God maintains that that description. In fact, we read at the end of verse 22, and all this Job sin not nor charge God foolishly. And I want you to note, as we kind of pick up where we left off now, verse number nine. 
verse number nine, where it says, then said his wife unto him. Now, before we get into Job's wife here, uh, let me just remind you of this fact. You know, oftentimes we get on Job's wife and we kind of, um, she kind of gets a bad rap and and to a certain extent, maybe rightfully so. But remember this, just as Job had experienced the loss of, loss of all his wealth, Job's wife experienced that too. And just as Job had uh, experienced the loss of life in regards to his sons and daughters, guess what? Job's wife experienced that too. Uh, and as Job now, his body is afflicted with boils. Job's wife, although she's not afflicted with the boils, she sees what her husband uh, is going through. Job's wife is a hurting woman. Uh, and she has gone through much of what Job has gone through, and, and to a certain extent, uh, even that, uh, even uh, a little bit more as she watches her husband go through. I know uh, in my life, I would rather be hurting than see my wife hurting. I would rather be hurting than see my children hurt. Uh, and man, it, it, it pains me to watch others hurt. And, and that's what Job's wife is going through. And so before we uh, knock Job's wife for uh, her response to this situation, let's be mindful of this. Hey, how would you respond after going through what she's gone through uh, and after watching what her husband has gone through? Hey, how would you respond? Now, look at what she says here. Verse number nine. Dost thou still retain thine integrity? Job, you've lost everything. Curse God and die. She says, Job, it's not worth living anymore. Job, we've lost everything. Everything that was near and dear to us, we've lost it. And Job, look at you. Job, your health is now failing. Job, just give up. It's not worth it. Look at Job's response in verse number 10. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. Job says this, says, hey, you know what? We're not, we're going to remain faithful. We're going to continue to trust God. It's, it's easy when life is good to remain faithful. It's easy when life is good to praise God, but Job says, you know what? Even when times are tough, even when trial and testing comes, we need to continue. God is the God of the good times is also the God of the bad times. Let's continue to trust him. We've kind of seen this thought before. Uh, if you want to, just for a moment here, go with me to Genesis chapter 50. Genesis chapter number 50. Uh, and we see another example, and some of you may recognize where we're going here, but Genesis chapter 50 and verse number 20. The Bible says, but as for you, and remember, this is the end. This is Joseph's life. Joseph's brothers—they're disheartened. They're discouraged. They're thinking, "Man, Joseph, he's got it out for us." But as for you, ye thought evil against me. But God meant it unto good, to bring to pass as it is this day to save much people. Job says to his brothers, "Hey, what you guys did to me." You thought it for evil, but God turned it out for good. Job says, you know what, man, we've had it pretty good. And you know what, God is faithful, and God was with us when times were good. And you know what, God's going to be there when times are bad. God's going to work things out for his honor and for his glory. What a unique uh, attitude and spirit that Job had. 
in this situation. Uh, and I would say he tries to encourage his wife. His, her, his wife is just discouraged, probably depressed and despairing. You think about it, Job's wife, who has her health still, is losing her husband, lost everything. Uh, and really, what does it look like that, that she's going to be a widow and she's going to be on her own and she's got nothing? She's going through a lot. Let me kind of just close with these with these thoughts here. When when we come to a situation maybe that Job finds himself in, and, and I pray that there's not that you don't go through anything like that, but what do you do you encourage others during their time of testing their trial? Or do we kind of come alongside like maybe Job's wife and pile on? And we're going to look at this as we close out chapter 2 tomorrow. Look at Job and his friends and just the, uh, with a hint of sarcasm here, just the encouragement that his friends are. Uh, but you know what? Uh, when, uh, when we are with somebody and somebody's going through something, hey, it's, we need to encourage uh, and sometimes we just need to be that good listener uh, as, as individuals go through their times of testing and times of trial. Uh, and so uh, Job's wife is just discouraged. Uh, and she responds, I think how many of us would respond, hey, you know what? Man, life is just hard. Job, it's just not working. But you know, as we come to those situations and come to those people, let's be a people of encouragement. And let's come alongside of people and rather than put them down and discourage them, let's build them up and encourage them. Uh, and man, what a, what a tremendous asset and help we can be if that is our desire as we seek to be that blessing encouragement. Man, to just come alongside and say, hey, how can I help? Hey, what can I do? Uh, and so, man, what's uh, just some tremendous truths and thoughts from Job's wife, and just the, um, just the reminder here uh, that man, uh, what we say can can help or hurt. Are we helping or hurting situations by what we say, and then also what we do? Okay, uh, I'm going to leave you those couple of thoughts. I think I, sorry, I rambled just a little bit there. It maybe kind of repeated myself a little bit, but uh, man, those are some good reminders from from Job, from Job's wife, uh, and man, she she really went through it uh, with Job. She went through it, uh, and we might not say we might say, man, that's a horrible response, but you know what? She's hurting just as much as Job is, maybe even a little bit more, uh, and so. Uh, hopefully we learned some truths today uh, and learn how to navigate through some of those uh, difficult days. Okay, uh, thank you for being on and watching today. Uh, let me uh, greet those who are watching on Facebook Live. Uh, be sure, like, share uh, if you can, and comment. I uh, would encourage you to do that so that others can, uh, uh, can, can learn and grow and follow right along with us as we walk through that book, of, walk through this book of Job. Uh, and then if you're watching on YouTube, be sure to comment on YouTube as well. Now, uh, let me give those shout outs here to those uh, watching live here on Facebook. Brian, Cindy, good morning to you. Hope you guys have a great day. Uh, Cliff and Karen, good morning. And thank you for watching today. Ingrid, good morning to you. Uh, hope the kids are on and watching as well and listening uh, and learning from Job. Uh, Lynette, good morning to you. Uh, Bill, good morning to you. And Ingrid, I agree. We have an amazing church family. Church family just, just jumps in, works together. Uh, and man, they're such a blessing. And thank you so much once again for all the thoughtful uh, notes and cards yesterday uh, and for the goodies as well. Uh, thank you so much for that. Gene, good morning to you. Have an awesome day. Uh, and uh, let's see who else we got here? Uh, David, good morning to you. Jody, good morning. Uh, Paula, good morning. Thank you for, uh, for watching. Listen, all of you have a great day today. Uh, Lord willing, we'll jump on tomorrow and see you then. Uh, be in prayer for our upcoming events. We've got the trunk or treat next Monday. 
Uh, we've got a busy weekend, men's prayer breakfast, as we kind of close out this month of October. And so be in prayer for one another, encourage one another today, and let's live for the Lord in a great way. Awesome. We'll see you guys tomorrow. Have an awesome day.